All right, welcome back. Super Sports Saturday continues. Tom Uvis is in to talk about a couple of meets. Uh, true team last week, senior night earlier this or just a few uh, a few days ago. And Tom, thanks for coming in and participating as always. It's great to be here. <laughs> well, a place to be. Let's talk about true team. Last week, uh, you went down what Morris, right? Actually, you know, it's at DL. At DL, okay. that's okay. And, and the reason why I said DL is because at least I was really happy is because that's where a section will be in. I'm really hoping that the format of True Team will be at the host site of sections because it gives the girls a chance to practice turns there, get used to the pool, get used to the block. So it's good. It's good precursor before the section meet. Yeah, that that is a. I know we've talked about this before. You know, water's water, right? But no, the atmosphere of the pool and getting used to the yeah. the different conditions it makes a difference. And the girls have said that when they've been in here. Yeah. Well, we've, it's been nice because we our first meet of the year we swam in DL. Then we swam a dual meet there, mm-hmm. and then we swam true team, and our, our fourth meet will be in right. DL. So it just it gives us a, it feels a little bit more like a home pool. And you've had some success there. You know, <laughs> you were fourth in the team scoring here, but after Park Rapids, that was a real battle for second and third and fourth place. Yeah, yeah I, I'm so impressed by this team. I know Joyce mentioned last time too the not just the character qualities of our girls, but also the consistency of the performance and and being willing to do some. Some events, you know, and the way True Team works again is that everyone scores, and so you take the 500 freestyle, we'll put three brand new 500 swimmers in that just to score points. And they could have said no, and they did. And they swam it for the team and did a great job. And, and plus, I think it made them realize that that might be an event for them down the road. Um, and I'm just impressed with um, our two relays, did very well. Yeah. We took Actually, we took two first places in our relays, and not that that's a predictor for. You know, state, but again, those are the teams that will be swimming against state, so there's a, a, a chance if we hit, we have a chance for maybe one or two relays going to state. Taylor had a very nice 50 free and 100 free. She swam against a very good swimmer from Bemidji, uh, Steph Fry, and she's, Steph Fry is a 12 month swimmer. I mean, she, I saw, I saw her swim this summer at, uh, at Champs, and she's a very quality swimmer, and, and Taylor swam a very good race against her in the 50 and the 100, and Taylor won that one. And Abby Fish, who swam a very good IM, and a fantastic, Backstroke. Talk about that uh, 200 medley relay and uh, Abby Fisher and Emily Hexham and Taylor Monk and Danny Ross uh, turned in their best time of the season. Is that the relay that is set now for sections? And uh, are you impressed with how they have improved consistently? Well, that's um, um, that right now looks like um, a a, um, a guarded answer. Would be yes. That's probably our relay for now. Um, we do have another breaststroke, Emily Reard, who does a really good job. She'll be a, an alternate on the relay, or possibly a swimming relay. This year, we've had to take a very, uh, uh, we, we had to really communicate very carefully that relays are, are can change any time, and, uh, uh, and we may move people around depending upon how they're swimming that particular day. You know, in swimming, basically, it's an individual event as well as a team event. The only place where there's really a true concept of team is the you know, the three relays, and that's where you have to have the chemistry, you have to have the starts and the turns, um, the relay starts. And uh, but again, if somebody gets hurt or sick or not hitting that particular day, we want to have the availability to to use our alternates in those relays. So, but right now it looks like a pretty solid relay. Emily Rare, who you mentioned, <laughs> was sixth in the uh, in the 200 IM in this true team meet, wow. and that shows you. You know, her versatility and her ability to master the strokes. Well, she's an athlete. And, I mean, you can do a lot with athletes. We've said that over and over again. And she dropped four seconds in the IM. And this is an eighth grader who was talking about 231 IM, which is really incredible. And uh, an IM is a very tough event because you're swimming all out four different strokes. And she's done an amazing job. And we're very pleased with that. And her breaststroke looks really good. And, and she trains. When she's in practice, she... She trains hard, and she knows that she's got some talent. So it's fun to watch that, especially when they're an eighth grader. So Emily has been just a really uh, bright spot for us this season. And how about Danny Ross? You know, fourth in uh, the 100 freestyle with a personal best time. Uh, she also was part of those two uh, winning relay teams. Third in the 50 freestyle. She's really coming on for you. She's doing an amazing job. You know, uh, she's she's kind of like a, um, the, the first month of the season is where she's kind of getting used to the the blocks and getting used to her. She's always a strong swimmer, but I was really impressed by her finishes. She had some phenomenal finishes at the end. And, you know, and, and that's instinctive. I mean, I basically, I don't know if you remember a long time ago, we had a gentleman from our team called uh, 
Nathan Job, and Nathan Job from the University of Minnesota. But anyway, Nathan had what we call a stealth finish. I mean, he he finished ahead of kids, and, and you would sworn he took second and third. And there's something about, and that's how Danny is. Danny has a beautiful finish. Uh, her last three strokes are perfectly timed. And for those of you who know swimming, it's the touch pad that counts. You know, and we're talking about hundreds of a second here. So if you can hit that pad just at that instant before your competition it makes a difference. And she's had some great timing finishes. That's what we were talking about. The one thing you don't do, you know, that you shave and all that to get mm -hmm. the speed, but you don't clip your fingernails, right? Because that we keep them really long, about four I, inches. I was going to say that's got to be it. It's kind of like the Wolverine, just <laughs> <ping, you> know, <laughs> exactly. We put gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about uh, the the uh, the contributions that Rachel Appert makes for you. Not only diving, where she has just become a, well a state qualifier last year, but she she also likes to go out and compete in the water and gives you some options there. I've seen a lot of hard workers in my coaching career, but Rachel would be ranked up in the top. I mean, this is a girl who, figure this out, take a Monday night. She, first of all, she, if we invite her to morning practice, she'll come. We've been trying to give her some rest for Monday mornings. She gets here at 3.30. She does a hard set in swimming for two hours, and then she has a little lunch, and then she goes on the board for an hour and a half. Uh, her diving has been really very good. She took third place in diving, which is, again, top four go to state. This is our section now, so she has an outside chance for state, and she's very consistent, very poised, is a very good entertainer on the board, and has done so well. But then she helps us in the backstroke. She's a phenomenal backstroker, and her relay strength is unbelievable. Uh, Rachel's a girl I wish we could put in every event because she'd do very well. But we're limited to two individual events, and one of them is diving, and the other one, of course, is backstroke. And, but her work, she's consistent in her preparation. And, you know, when you talk about life goals, you talk about um, something that you can take with you in life, that's going to be really key when she starts her career professionally. It's been fun to, to watch the, the results here and the, to see these girls uh, make progress throughout the season because I think there are a lot of question marks coming into the year. Where are we going to put people in the lineup? How are they going to contribute? How are they going to respond to the competition? And as I look at this and, and see best times all over the board here and, and Emily Hexham third in the 100 breaststroke with her best time and then Emily Reard in the fifth place position there and Katie Gano with some good times, and Elise Anderson with her uh, best time in the 200 freestyle. You have seen that, you know, pretty much across the board, Tom. The, the progress has been great. Well, this is going to sound like a really strange comment to make, but this is a team, even though, I, I mean, we're getting close to the end of the season, it'd be nice to have another month because they're just getting in shape. And you don't realize, but you can't really train until you're in shape a little bit, and, and now they're beginning to train. I mean, now they can actually do sets, and they can really perform because... They, they have the conditioning behind, but also they have the uh, the neurological part of the sport. They they, they they catch the water better, or they, they hold the water better, whatever you want to call it, and it makes a huge difference. Elise is a good example. Um, Elise had a really good race on Tuesday night. Now, she didn't win that race, but the other two girls she competed against are probably better swimmers than Elise, I mean, just technique-wise. And, and Elise stayed with them the whole way and, and swam great. And now she, I told her the other day, I said, you, you're just beginning to figure out swimming. And, you, and you, you know, you're you going to be a, a, a good swimmer and maybe a, a very good swimmer down the road. Her work ethic is, is just like Rachel's. I mean, she, she'll do anything to get to the next level, and, and that's her character trait she has. And, and kids appreciate that because they, they see her hard work and her effort every day. And she did great. And she swims a Twitter freestyle, which is a brutal event. It's, it's like the half mile. I mean, you know, those of us run the half mile, I swam a 200 in high school and college, but, you know, that's an all-out sprint for 200 yards. And that last 25, you do get headaches because you, you're so oxygen-deprived, and it's a very, very grueling event, and, and Elise has performed well. But this is going to help Elise in some other events. If she, when she swims a 50 someday or the 100, the 200 has really helped her 100 because she's got more stamina, especially the last 12 yards. Tuesday night. You had your senior night, mm -hmm. and that's always an emotional night, of course, for your yeah. for your seniors. And you want to go out and, and compete well in your home pool the last time you get the opportunity there. And you had St. Cloud Tech in town, and you told me uh, when we talked uh, prior to that that uh, this could be a meet that goes down to the to the wire. You know, that it's at the even as far as trying to score yeah. it out. And uh, Tech did get the win in, in that one. But overall, uh, a pretty good night for the girls. We, you know, it was a good night. We uh, we scored up the homie, and you know what? Um, Tech took a big jump on us starting out because they they two three us in the relay. We really wanted to have that one three, and then I think in the free they they did just a little bit better. I think they won two us, and we just missed that second place by a, 
I mean, by just a little bit. And so what happened was this, we had a little bit of a snowballing effect where we are down by where we thought we'd be uh, close to maybe five ahead going into diving. I think we're down by five. So it's a plus 10 difference. And um, But we came back really well. We swam well in our form. We really did great. And, and um, we, the Tech's a good team. I mean, they've got it's a, it's a very classy operation. They're extremely pleased with um, their racing. You got a nice coach. They have a huge program. I got about forty three kids out, which yeah. is great to see. And and but just you know, it's just a great atmosphere for the seniors because it's senior night, but also it's, it was a great competitive meet, and we have of course great crowds. Um, and you know, uh, we're going to talk about the seniors. Yeah, you yeah. had some uh, some seniors uh, who uh, did very well for you with uh, some some good times and good finishes and. Uh, Katie Gano. Yeah, I want to talk about Katie because I, she had a phenomenal um, true team meet. Um, Katie Gano is almost there. I mean, she's kind of like a lease. I mean, she's she's short 15 yards on the fly right now of really popping a really good time. But I am so impressed with this young lady because here's a lady who could really possibly have said no to swimming because you know you're not you're not the star. You know, you're a senior now. You're not the star, but. She has worked hard, and she's contrib- contributed to the team, and she'll do anything for the team, and, and those are just some of the best models we have. And, and I was just so happy for her. I thought her fly was exceptional. I told her that, uh, especially Tuesday night. I mean, it's a very smooth fly, and she gets a little tired at the end. She just runs out on the stamina part of it, but she, her fly is hitting very well, and so is her breaststroke, and she's a huge contributor in our relays. How about Delaney Shera? Delaney Shira has really come on. This is a new swimmer. I, mean, I think Delaney's been competing for, let's say, four years, and that may not sound like that shouldn't be new or maybe five, but um, Delaney is just getting there, and uh, she swims a very nice IM. Uh, she, she can match, she's mastered all four strokes, and same with Delaney. She could use another monthly or not just of training, but she's doing just great, and then, of course, we put in the backstroke because she's a very good backstroker. Our backstroke is our best event right now of, of quality depth because we, we scored more points on whether four backstrokers are true team than any other event. And Taylor Monk, uh, she's there. Yeah, she's there. She's an athlete. She's a gift. She's at Moorhead State right now. They're recruiting her for swimming, and uh, their coach, Todd, has a real good program there, and that's where Susie Kitzman's at. And I, I, you know, I hope that Taylor does swim in college. I think it would be good for her. I think it would be good for any team she's on. Um, she's she's a complete package. She's an athlete. Yeah, and she's uh, she's got some great opportunities uh, looking ahead to uh, to sections, which we'll do in a couple weeks here. But um, she's uh, on top of her game, no doubt. And then uh, tell us about Greta Garvey. Greta Garvey is a transfer from Phoenix. Um, she didn't really swim in high school. I mean, she did club swimming, and she's just beginning to to, to really get into it. She's you can tell she's she's a polished swimmer. She's got good starts. Her turns are really good. She's missing a little bit of stamina, but she's one of very good breaststroke times, the best of, uh, of our season so far for her. This uh, this meet, you did a couple of different <laughs> things, like um, put Danny Ross in the 500 freestyle. Yeah. Uh, how did that turn out? Great. <laughs> um, it was an interesting moment. Uh, Danny was a little down on the weather, but uh, she didn't have a, a temperature, and I told her this could be her finest hour, and you know how kids kind of wonder about that. <laughs> so we get in the 500, and... And she's swimming, and, you know, she's, she's laid back third place, and 500 is a long time. So what's nice about the 500 is you can make moves in it. It's kind of like cross country. And so she's going along, and she's in second place now, and she's about 10 yards behind going the last turn. And, and all of a sudden you can see the other swimmers getting kind of weak, and Danny kind of saw that. So Danny, Danny kicks it in the last 25. And of course, everyone's going crazy. And keep in mind, Tech has a substantial lead in the meet now, so it's a race we're looking at, and she just out-touches this girl from Tech, and and um, I told her afterwards, I said, see, yeah, it's going to be your finest hour, it was, and she did really well, and she swam a great meet. She, <laughs> we just really needed her in the 500, that's what's nice about Danny, we've used Danny in the breaststroke in her critical meet, and we can swim her anywhere, she can swim IM, so it's very nice to have that versatility. Has she been begging and pleading with you and texting Never. you that she can continue to swim that 500? No, 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 no. I was, uh, oh. <laughs> that's for the team. No. She loves the 50 and the 100. We know that. And that which is a, brings up a good question because our, our dual meet, the way we move kids around, Elise is a good example. Uh, Elise probably will be swimming the 50 free at CLC, and she won't be swimming the 200 free. Um, because, you know, we, it's, a different, it's a different package than with CLC. CLC wants to see how well the individuals do as well as the team. Uh, and then, of course, sections, it's just all about gaining state. I mean, that's what we're really looking right. at. So, so we'll move. So, for example, Danny will definitely be in the 1500 free. 
you know, we're going to be really light in the 500. We may only have one competitor in the 500. We may, in the 200, we may only have two. Uh, but it's just, it's a different year for us. We're not, as a team, we're not looking to capture the title. Um, but that doesn't mean that down the road we won't be because uh, yeah. I'm going to do some analysis of how many kids are graduating. For example, you know, Perm, Perm took uh, second place mm-hmm. at true team section. But, um, and Sherry knows this is her year, but she's got 12 seniors she's graduating, but she's got a nice team. And, uh, and hats off to them again. But um, it'd be fun to see what our young kids can do because we've got some young kids coming up, and I think we're going to get stronger and stronger. Oh, they're starting to believe. You know, they're seeing the results, and like you said, that uh, goes a long way uh, toward uh, the future. Now, the Central Lakes Conference meet next Saturday. Uh, can anybody touch Sartell as a team? No, I don't think so. I, I think they're pretty solid. But, um, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, they're undefeated. And... <laughs> which is really neat the way it works is you get two points for every meet you win so point wise already had um, I don't know where Brainerd is in this meet um, I suppose they're right up there um, Tech has a nice team Tech could be up there somewhere too but uh, I think it's probably going to be Sartell and I, I suspect that um, Tech and, and Brainerd will be somewhere in the hunt for second or third place we're hoping for possibly fourth maybe fifth right in there um you know, an example is in diving, we only have one diver. So, I mean, um, yeah. we're, we're really light in numbers, and, and uh, we'll do the best we can. So, uh, But we're looking forward to it. It should be a good meet. Can yeah. I, yeah. I, I just need, a, you know, Emily Hexham, we, we didn't really get a chance to talk about, and she, you're right, she has had a phenomenal uh, last part of the season. But anyway, on Tuesday night, she's from a 116 breaststroke, which is incredible. And she's finally, and this is another thing, too, you have to realize that it takes... It takes a long time to perfect your stroke, and now she's being going to get the perfection down a little bit more, and then her training changes because uh, her technique changes, so she's going faster through the water, and metabolically she's changing. But it's been fun to watch her develop, and, and, and she can really swim anything for us. We have her in the IM. She's also a very good tour and freestyler, but, um, again, a good example would be at True Team section, she's from the IM for us, which is another one of our solid events. Um, and then um, Ann Childs is one of our juniors is doing just a great job on the fly and the relays. And uh, Ingrid Nicomo has been a great contributor for us in, in a lot of different events, as well as Emily Hawk and uh, Anna Van Valkenburg. Well, I really appreciate uh, the way you uh, you evaluate your swimmers, Tom, and and, uh, and celebrate every little step. I mean, the, when they master the stroke, like you're saying, or you see that progress where they're now, you can really start training them because they have that stroke down. That shows me just how in tune you are to each one of your athletes out there. Well, you know, I, I, I have great assistant coaches and they make me look good, but Joyce Monk <laughs> is one of the best assistant coaches you're ever going to have. Or, uh, and, you know, she just does a great job and, and, and she makes me better because of her detail in strokes that I'm starting to say the strokes more. I, uh, Stroke study, I'm, I'm not patient for. I, I really love training. You know, I mean, designing sets of four 400 IMs or something like that, I enjoy that part of it. But uh, I need to spend a little more time. We, we actually watched some videos last night, yesterday, which is not my comfort zone because it cost us a 1,000 yards in practice. But, <laughs> but we did. And uh, we did because we want we wanted the kids to try and work on the technique a little bit more. And I think, it'll be, I think it will work out well for us. I, uh, I think I need to... Uh, realize that more and more but you know thank you we we're having a, a good year we're having fun and um and we have some great kids outstanding well enjoy uh, next saturday with that central lakes conference meet in uh, sartell and we'll uh look forward to uh sections on uh, what november i don't have that date here maybe um, you don't either uh, friday the 11th and yeah. saturday the 12th Which is oh, on yeah. it isn't that amazing it. how long that is that season that's a yeah. long and yeah. then and then it still will be the following hopefully Thursday, Friday, just before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> wow! So we have we have three, three as we said, three minutes and four four weeks of training, which is great. Good for that, <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. Hockey team, girls hockey team will already play a few games by the time their season's done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. it'll be on the radio too. There oh, you go. Hockey coming up, man. <laughs> Tom, thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you so much. Tom Uvis with the girls swimming and diving team.